Hello, everybody, and welcome to Final Show Films. I'm John, your executive producer here, and thanks for tuning in to watch or listen to whatever it is you're about to watch or listen to. In these trying times, we really do appreciate everyone that feels that we are worth their time, and we hope that we're able to give you something entertaining to while away the time as you spend it. Uh, we particularly want to thank those of you that feel like we're worth financially contributing to, uh, particularly our $25 and up supporters on Patreon, who are Antitonic, Drevian Alexander, Cat Waterflame, Rowan Parker, and Samantha Bates. Yes, I read that off of a list. Thank you very much for supporting us. I know that in these uncertain times, finances are tough for everybody, so that you're willing to donate to us means a lot to all of us here, and we thank you. That being said, please sit back, relax, and enjoy. We're live. Philosophical cosmic <laughs> discussions aside, uh, and <laughs> welcome everybody to Final Show Films, Star Wars, Twilight Nights, and two episode Prey. I'm John, and <laughs> your game master for the evening as I watch multiple layers of cringe happen from my players. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm glad you noticed. Mm -hmm. Multiple layers. It's it's like a it's like an eight layer burrito. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm John. I'm your game master for the evening. Joining me today is Mara. Hi, I'm Mara. Uh, I'm playing Nariz, uh, droid counselor, healer. And roll that destiny point. Okay. Destiny. One light side. Droid Consular Healer, who's feeling really good about their chances. Uh, and Jeremy? Hi, I'm Jeremy. Uh, I am playing Esty, um, a, a Zoltron uh, a Shadow. And, and Point? Uh, oh, that was Sync, not Roll. I'm feeling less good because... <laughs> I mean, reasons you did just find out that several you know multiple of you have mysterious foreign objects planted in your body that you don't really know what they do but you have an idea what they do also we're on nerf fucking shit off it's the most welcoming place in the galaxy it is not it absolutely you say is. this and i most doubt welcoming you place, i don't it's, know enough it's the most welcoming place in the galaxy it just doesn't want you to leave and holly hi i'm holly i'm playing uh vazia uh, Pure Blood Sith, uh, Geo Berserker. Light side. Hi, Vasya. Also feeling good about their chance. Uh, and William. I am William, and I'm playing Corsarath, the Pure Blood Sith Makashi Duelist. Also. Feeling very it's even perfectly today. even. Yeah. Uh, so, Jack will unfortunately not be joining us today, but I think this will be the last week that we don't have Jack regularly, so have him back next week. Um, we will not have, uh, we will not have the stalwart Jash Ulan with us, but that's okay, I'm sure we'll have him. As always, remember, uh, Black Lives Matter, and let's get into the game. Don't take ivermectin. Don't, unless you, He's unless, smarter <laughs> than Joe Rogan. It's not hard. It's Bad choices. And in that case, take it directly to your horse. Um, <laughs> so, when last we left off, the remaining members of the Twilight Knights, plus Esty, um, have... Headed to Nar Shadda in search of some sort of medical aid from a doctor at the helpful and mysterious Black Pyramid. Um, one scanned doctor who is maybe not the best doctor that you could possibly find, but owes him a favor and is available on Nar Shadda rather than having to track through the Imperial uh, controlled blasted land. 
Why can't I? Ta Taurus. I don't know why I couldn't think of the name of the planet, but. Uh, so you step off the ship. I immediately assailed bright lights, loud sounds of Nar Shada. Neon lights sort of scaling various tall skyscraper like buildings that surround the docking, the open air docking bay that you're currently standing inside. All broadcasting all manner of advertisement for various uh, goods and services, personal, professional, business, and illicit. Uh, a stream, a steady stream of vehicles flowing through the air above, parting only for larger ships to move through as in a case of, oh shit, I'm about to die, rather than there's any sort of traffic law. Around you, there are the scattered remains of a few bodies that may have at one point been living, but are now mostly disintegrated bits of ash and some clothes uh, that are currently being swept up by some pit droids. A number of these large-headed mechanic droids that are basically two of them, one standing on top of the other one, both of them holding a broom, sweeping up the ashes while three more pick up clothes and you do recall having heard a a, a port of a disruptor rifle uh going off black pyramid had left the ship earlier presumably result of that uh you fucking hate this place been here before yeah I worked well I I come here I've come here uh for lots of work put it that way Right We should stick together this is loud. Yes we should Nobody should go off alone You see the Black Pyramid uh, exchanging words with uh, an alien that be in charge of the docking bay. Fairly large, four arm. Um, looks kind. Of, the face looks kind of like a spider, but not, but like a, like a realistic spider rather than the cartoony, lots of eyes thing. Like lots of really small eyes and a couple of big tusks that sort of flutter and speaks. Um. They they sit they, they pass back and forth some information in what sounds like Hutties uh before the dock master shoes away some of the off into another room. The pyramid looks back at the group of you. Alright, well this way. He and Ronan are both wearing helmets still. Are both wearing their helmets still. Uh are the the four of you doing anything to alter your appearance or are you walking Uh, I had a, and I should still have, um, concealing robes. Got those on. All right. So this large, uh, tri-legged droid with one lot with one golden arm, uh, has put on a pair of gray robes that cover most of it, though you can still very clearly tell that there's the silhouette of a tripedal droid underneath it. This is not helping. Not really. Shit. It probably make you stand out more. Would anyone like to borrow these? Yeah, sort of big tent energy. <laughs> uh, Vazia has a black cloak. She'll put. She'll just put a, the hood up. Uh, Corsarath, dressed in his old armor, uh, puts the helmet that is included in it on. And then puts robes over top. Yeah, shockingly, I did not get a chance to grab all of my gear out of my room. Therefore, yes, I would love your robe, please. I take it off. It takes a while. It gets stuck on edges. Fair. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. This uh, this robe is designed to mostly hide a lar a fairly large 
droid. Uh, so you put it on SD and it... It adds one difficulty to checks or notice or recognize an individual wearing them. Definitely hard to recognize you. You have no silhouette in this. I'll t- I will fucking take it. I don't <laughs> care right now. There is definitely a moment of hesitation, but... Kid, it's a kid dressing in the father's bathrobe. Sing. <laughs> No, this is great. This means that I can like, I can like have like have my saber at the ready, like yeah, you ready to stab whole... somebody before they even know there's movement. Exactly. I can just hold it here, get close to them, and go, whoosh, and then they have a hole in their chest. Justin was already mostly invisible, anyways. Yep. So, appropriately donned. Uh, the four robed figures, two armored figures, and a droid uh, step out into the mean streets of Narshida, which, after walking for but a scant few moments, very quickly ends to the mean edge of Narshida, as you realize that this docking platform is mobile and hovering. Uh, as you As you follow... Uh, your guide out, you find yourselves on a large open platform uh, that seems to have a number of people, you know, meandering about on it, having conversations, selling a few things, and like a, the Narshida equivalent of a hot dog stand, uh, and also uh, thumbing taxi rides out of the air. Several yellow and black uh, hover cars <laughs> drop down, pick up passengers, <laughs> go back up into the traffic stream of heads. Looking around, the pyramid sort of looks up. Looks like he's looking for something in specific. Pulls a small device off of his hip, just points and clicks. And you, you sort of, all of you hear just sort of like a high-pitched beep, beep, beep sound as he clicks it. And then you see, breaking free from one of the streams of traffic above, a large black... Marked like on the taxi, not on the side of it, marked as a taxi, but it's sort of like the, it's it's a black panel van equivalent of a hover car that just sort of <laughs> comes down and stops on the edge of the platform. Side panel <laughs> opening up as he looks at the rest of you and just sort of gestures towards it. Yep. And... Step inside. It's been a while since most of you have been on a hover vehicle. At least that you can recall. You get that uneasy feeling of the ground not being quite stable as you step into the bed of this truck. There are no seats. There are a couple of different, like, um, cardboard boxes, basically, scattered about. It looks like this is a delivery van of some kind. Uh, and with a graded access closed off. Uh, to the front of the van as you squeeze in and the other two squeeze in the side panel <laughs> closes. Ronan goes over to the front and just sort of bangs on the chain mail. There's a small th- uh, like eye let like eye sized slit opens up and this fleshy snake like tendril with an eyeball at the end of it, she sort of slithers through the chain link and looks at Ronan. There's another quick, uh, dis- there's another quick back and forth in Hatties. You got Hatties? Uh, right. yes. There's yeah. there's no languages in this, yeah. but you, with you backstory, absolutely. Uh, yes, of course. Wrath would definitely speak Hatties. Nope. Yeah, I think I learned it. I think that was one I decided. So I learned everyone it. except for a boss, you can basically. He's he's giving directions and also suggesting a payment um to the to the eye stock. Uh and over the course of the conversation you get the sense that this is a non standard taxi service that is basically just somebody who's a delivery driver moonlighting as a taxi for certain individuals. Um you imagine that whatever that beat that the pyramid used is their sort of call sign for After a quick conversation, the eye stalks 
sucks back into the front. That eye, that eye door closes, and you feel the hover truck taking off. Yeah, do you, do you speak Hatti? The sort of the Star Wars equivalent of do you speak German? <laughs> like that sort of universal business language that you're gonna need to know international dealings. Or Chinese, but yeah. Sort of, yeah. So we're all cramped in the back of the van. Anyone doing anything? Um. Well, I'm looking at skills. Ooh, that's not going to help. That's not going to help. That's not going to help. So question. Yes. If you were to do something now and it lasts for the remainder of the encounter, how long would that be? I know encounter is very nebulous and purposefully so for the purposes of this one, how long would that be? I would say it lasts until the end of the scene, which is inside the van. Okay. Fair enough. You know what? I'll do it anyways. It, it seems like a good point. I am going to use Shroud. Okay. Uh, spend a destiny point to make myself undetectable via the force and make my own force powers un unnoticeable for the remainder of the encounter. Right. So for the remainder of the truck ride, do you need to roll for that or just... I spend a destiny point. Destiny point? You all Because I just blink out. You all sort of sense... SD's presence in the force begins to fade until it just whew. it's kind of it's almost hard to look at SD at this point um, not because there's anything like obscure but because you all see much that when one of them is blinded it's sort of like Kind of like when 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 Nereus is when Nereus is suppressing their aura, and you sort of have this instant look past them. It's that. It's it's basically that, but without. Something that looks like hmm? you've hidden. It's for the best. Can you show me how to do that? I'm going to suppress while we're here. So Nereez is doing something similar, but not as useful. You can feel Nereez sort of once You again can still return. see Nereez, but they're, they're yeah. uh, you can't feel them in the force. Except for the lightsaber, which the is still board. there, mm -hmm. I think, yep. right? Not in a reason. Nope. I don't think anything's going to be a problem. Most of the people I have to avoid here don't generally operate directly out of Narshada, but the last thing that we need is to make big noise right now. And she just smells like, it'll be fine. Just because I'm curious uh, whether or not it was the character not answering the question or Jeremy not hearing the question. Uh, Neri's did ask if you could teach her that. Oh. I mean, I can try I don't know can you teach someone a talent that is a ways down on your on your specializations talent tree you can try 
Yeah, I can try. <laughs> yep. <laughs> try enough to sort of give the character a sense of what they need they spend XP in that talent tree yep yep anyone else doing anything I am staying calm I am concentrating on staying calm that there are too many people here it's loud there's a lot of noise and I have been hiding for six months it doesn't, this is terrifying. it doesn't help that you get regular like the sound of vehicles passing by at a great speed very yep. regularly very uh -huh. closely and horns honking typically following and preceding them yep I'm staying calm <laughs> All right, and the, the the lightsaber helps. The, the, yep. Mm -hmm. uh, the pyramid basically sort of sticks himself up into a corner, and you as a stand against it, and he stops moving for long enough that all of you thinks he think he may have just fallen asleep. But eventually, the vehicle <laughs> bumps, and you all sort of shift. And as you do, very cleanly, he uses one foot to kick the butt of the up, grabs it with his free hand, slings it, and his steps past a couple of the duck to the side. That side, <laughs> and he steps out and drops. But to sort of watch him go. <laughs> Are we following after? Yep. Where did he go? Well. You head over to the door? Yeah. You look down. Yep. You're about 12 feet off the ground. That is quite far. He's just sort of looking up at you. I go, I, I back up slightly. Is there a ladder? Ronan shakes his head. I might break if I fall down that. Give you a hand. Yes. I go back. He moves over to he moves over to the door. Cover. And he just sort of pushes off. And where you expect him to fall hovers for just a little bit as him, and the two of you very slowly fall to, uh, float to the ground. Okay. We talked about this last time, but I do not remember. Move. I have moved. Does that? It's it's uh, silhouette zero. Would that include? Would that cover just myself moving, or that would I cover need to be alone? your lightsaber? Gotcha. Thank you. Who are silhouette one? Gotcha. All right, I'm done. Silhouette zero is things that you can carry. Mm. All things. That you can. Okay, I should write this in here so that I remember. All right, the other three. Uh, of course, Wrath will just drop. Yep. Yeah, I'm not too concerned. Yep. Maybe you pop out. I will drop. Love you. Van takes off. You realize that it was a little bit up because this is this is not actually a landing spot you're in. Uh, this is sort of the end of a trash, like a like a like a trash alleyway, where it just piles and piles of discarded debris and piled up and stacked up. There is like the demarcation of a garbage disposal like lane here, where supposedly a garbage truck of some kind is supposed to come and acquire all these things, or a garbage truck, but uh, doesn't seem to have gotten here in a while. The, uh, the pyramid strides down the end. Follow after. Very quickly, 
he leads you down a series of interconnected uh, alleyways, all of which same bright multi sign points you out to a variety of different uh, locations. The uh, objects of their advertisement growing more and more lascivious as you go. Eventually, he stops. Down sort of cross alleyway. The, uh, the, there's a vent on smoke. All right. So, a lot are going to go down that alleyway. Only door that doesn't have neon is the one you want to knock on. Or no, no, I gotta post up over here and make sure nobody's following me. Remember to smile, make a good impression. And he and Ronan step off into an alleyway. Wait, what is this person's name? What should we tell them? Is there a sign? Here, uh, there's a beep as your comm link goes off. Dr. Lucku. Right. Oh, wait, no. Your comm doesn't go off because you have personal comm blockers. Uh, sorry. Pyramid's head steps, uh, Pyramid's head uh, uh, leans back out and he just goes, Dr. Lucku. You'll know him when you see him. That's back up. Right. Nerese is going to lead the way. I'm looking around. I've got uh, my electro binoculars on. I want to have them doing like thermal imaging. If it's not, I don't know how busy this area is, um, but if it's a little bit quieter, just in case I see something that looks out of the ordinary. Mostly what your, what your electro binoculars are picking up are the brilliant neon lights that are saturating these alleyways. Fair. Okay. Let's go. Walk to door indicated. You walk down the alley looking for a door, the only door that is not. It's a bit harder to find just because everything else is so lit with neon lights. Mm -hmm. But after a few moments of looking, four of you come to a stop outside a very plain, like not decorated at all. Um, not even like a ceiling door. This is a normal ass hinged door. I seem quieter than everyone else. Maybe this will help if I turn up my volume. Um, it's a normal ass hinged door. Like, metal rectangle, couple of hinges, and a doorknob. Which is unusual. But it's the only door out here that doesn't have neon on it, and no signage of any kind. Look at rest of the group. Are we ready? As ever. <laughs> that means a lot less when I've known you for, known you, actually known Correct. you for like. Two days. Two days, yeah. But yes, ready. Which one of you knocks? The Reese knocks. Okay. Ting, ting, ting. Two days, 15 minutes, 37 seconds. This is not an accurate measurement. Nerese is making shit up. <laughs> the knocking on the door is particularly hollow. Which again... Remember, we're just scouting this place. Mostly unusual, yeah. just because most doors that you encounter in the modern times are, you know, sealable blast doors of some variety. Right. So the sort of the, the, the like tinny hollowness of this particular hinged door seems very out of place. But there's no response. I will reach out and push the door open. You push it for a second, realize it's a pull door, pull it, and it opens. Okay, I pull it. I, if it's a clear pull door, I just pull it. Oh no, it's it's it's. it's I am not the far side character. No, you, you, it doesn't take you very long to realize that it's a pull door. It's just again, it's a really. This is okay, not a kind fair. of door that you normally find. So you go, uh, okay, pull and 
the hinges squeak as if they haven't been ru- they haven't been uh, you know lubricated in a while. Yeah, that there's no indication of whether this is a push or a pull door. So you try push and then pull. Yeah, it's only, it's a, you just grab the handle, twist, push, no pull. Uh, inside there's a dimly lit hallway with a uh, black and white tile floor that is covered in a variety of grime, and there are at least three lights in the hallway that are flickering as if they're not getting quite enough power. The hallway leads down. Murder basement. <laughs> That's not ominous. The hallway leads down. Uh, there's a series of doors on the left-hand side, nothing on the right-hand side, and eventually there is a much more modern-looking blast door at the end of the hallway. As we're going down, Esty will say, don't worry, this is not a sign that is particularly worse. There are just as bad rooms to go into that are not lit this way on Narshada. It's certainly not doing much for confidence, though. Yeah. I like to at least know what I know when it. Give me aesthetic along with. Maybe it's just me. You. Knock on the blast door. As you get to the end of the hall, you hear a ching ching sound from the other side. As that first door you passed kicks open and you watch as this sort of large slug looking creature just pulls out a large plastic bag of some kind. It makes sort of a wet dragging sound on the ground as it steps out into the hallway, looks over, sees you, Juba the Noia. And just heads towards the front door, dragging this liquid, this bag that seems to have some sort of liquid in it behind it. I will greet the back and then let's go. That's really reassuring. <laughs> the door, you go to the door, you knock on it, ting ting. There's a little, like a little, a little uh, circular latch just unopens and a mechanical eye pokes out looks at you near east looks you up and down and in Hatties, which you don't speak but two others do oh no no you do sorry you do Avasia doesn't speak yep yeah I know goes what do you want bargain basement droid Dr. Laku the uh, the like mechanical pupil like narrows on you. Who's asking? Of course, Wrath leans into the sight of the of the of the eye at this point and just says, "Associates of Black Pyramid." The eye turns to you. the The mechanical iris adjusts a few times. You get the distinct impression that it's taking pictures. And then it, of a helmet. <laughs> yeah, of a helmet. <laughs> the blast door slowly begins to open. And eventually it completes. There's a darkened room before you. Of course, we're to step in. Do any of you not step through? Mara, I don't know if you said anything there. Just went... Oh, no, I step in. Okay. You all step in into this darkened area. The door closes behind you. The moment of the four of you just sitting there in darkness. Or this loud humming sound. Fairly, you know, bright bluish white lights come on overhead. You find yourself standing in what seems to be some kind of warehouse that is immaculately clean, particularly considering the hallway you just walked through. Clean white metal flooring, uh, several stacked containers, all of which are marked 
uh, for various levels of supplies, various levels of medical supplies. Um, a couple of just for a couple of small droids are sort of maneuvering around between the stacks with clipboards, taking you know taking inventory, looking around, looking back, taking inventory. There's a tink, tink, tink sound, and from around a corner you turn and look, and there is this small standing roughly around you'd imagine four feet tall, um, bug-eyed creature with these. It sort of looks like a it looks kind of like a fly. Uh, but modeled in like uh scaly uh, across the head, two big uh multi you know multifaceted eyeballs, a large uh what looks almost like what you would consider to be some sort of gas mask or mechanical incubator, just sort of embedded in the face and around it with an with another metal uh headband that's covered in a variety of different uh like uh, what look to be like cameras or lenses of deck top of it. Wearing dark brown, uh, sort of brown and dark, uh, dark orange robes, uh, with a bandolier across the front with a variety of pouches and uh, glassware attached to it. Holding a large metal cane, or a large metal staff that it's walking with, uh, a sort of a rucksack tucked over one shoulder with various bits of metal pieces sort of sticking out of it, uh, and a large, and and then like the other hand holding this large. Uh, briefcase looking device that has sort of medical symbols on the side of it and in this very high pitched uh, sort of insectoid voice just begins to start speaking rapidly in syllables in a language none of you understand but after a few moments there is this mo there's a sort of brief moment of recognition in it that reaches up and twists the little gas mask thing in its mouth welcome friends of the black pyramid what can I assist you with? Hello. We have the need for some, let's call it emergency surgery. We have things in us that we need removed. Things in need removed. Gallbladders, gallstones, extra livers, extraneous lungs. What sort of things need to be removed? Probably explosives. Hmm, interesting. Mechanical, mechanical. The droid as well, pointing at Neris. No, I do not require any assistance. Oh, well. So, friends of the Lock Pyramid have explosives inside them that they need Dr. Lucku to remove. Well, it's your lucky day. My friends and family plan was about to expire. Follow me. And he turns and clinks away with this metal staff. Follow um, along. Yep. I'm looking around at the medical supplies and stuff like that, just trying to gauge how uh, well supplied this guy is and if they're going to be able to do this properly, basically. Make a medicine check. Okay. Or knowledge underworld, one of the two. Uh, I'm much better at medical. Uh, difficulty two? Difficulty two, yeah. Hey. Does that boost die help you with knowledge checks? Oh, I do. The boost die is from having a med kit. No, it doesn't help with this. The boost die wouldn't help, but that's fine. Yeah. Uh, it okay. would only give you a threat. Um... So two successes, a triumph, and a threat. So with your successes and your triumph, or with your success, I'll let you decide what you might want to do with your triumph uh, for, okay. for, a, for a social role-play scene. But um, uh, with the two successes, you determine that this is a, this is a large amount of medical supplies, um, all of which is being sort of categorized and taken care of in a very, very clean area, particularly considering the location. And... Um, like it seems to be like a fairly well organized, well connected individual who you know, doesn't speak that doesn't speak to his skill, but at least it speaks to his knowledge of you know medical supplies. With the threat, I'll say you realize these are probably smuggled or stolen. These are probably like you know black market medical supplies. Yeah. 
Do you have any idea what you'd like to do with that triumph? Um... Nerys is basically just trying to assess risk. I have a real quick question because mm -hmm. I don't remember um, off the top of my head. Uh, back in season one, um, did I ever like, have I ever been scanned or know for sure if, if anything on my bones is uh, possibly uh, tracking? Like the rest of the group has, I know. Like, no, you've never, the, you've never the, scanned. Okay. Alright. Hmm. Uh with that I also wanna know like going forward how discreet this guy might be, I guess. Uh because... we'll say with that triumph. Okay. You notice that there are no security cameras. Okay. Looking around. There are no security cameras in the room, at least. Mm -hmm. The only staff seem to be droids. Um, and the only individual you've seen so far is this one Gand. Mm -hmm. So, you, you sort of get a sense that he's a very private individual. Okay. Whether that means he'll be discreet for you in particular, you don't know. But mm -hmm. It doesn't seem like someone who broadcasts his business, particularly considering that it was behind a blast door in what is definitely a slum. Yep. Legit. Okay. So, what do you need from us? Hmm. Getting straight to the point, I see. Well, very clever. There are a few things that I could use, considering that I'm assuming you're here because you can't afford the uh, traditional fees associated with such a dangerous surgery. Let's say discretion is a concern, and just leave it at that. Oh, discretion is part and parcel of our trade here in these particular sections of Narshida. In fact, a discretion is what I would require in return. What kind? There have been particular Republic investigators that have been sticking their noses in places where they don't belong, particularly here on Narshida. Some locally righteous and self-aggrandizing Republic investigators looking to earn a good name for themselves with the Republic military trying to find imperial secrets on Narshida amongst our famed neutrality. In the course of their investigations, they managed to have, shall we say, pinch one of my supply lines and a variety of information that is contained within. So, you're going to be using some of my supply. It would be nice if you could secure the information that they have gained from my supply line. Okay. I don't care what do you how... Know about, what do you know about them? I know it's a small task force. Mm, I'm not certain the ver exact numbers, but they're moving quietly enough that uh, the cartels are leaving them alone. They're not making enough of a fuck. They're not making enough of a ruckus to uh, draw down the hammer, as it were, nor to draw imperial intelligence onto them. So they're not a large number, but they are skilled. They just happen to have stumbled upon my medical pipeline instead of any illicit Sith pipelines. Right. You said they're trying to make the name... Well... As any as any would be good would would be do gooders do, they go to a location they think is rife with criminality expunge some of it, put it into our paperwork, and send it off to get a promotion. Right. So they are they are they being ambitious and taking their own initiative, or is this specifically under order? That I don't know. Okay. 
would be good to find out, though. A little bit of blackmail goes a long way in Nashadar. But we'll consider it a quid pro quo, shall we? You want to find out what they know, not have us do anything about it. You can do whatever you like about it. I simply want the information that they've stolen from me back in not their hands. I don't want to necessarily care what they know. I care that they no longer know my information. Ah. It's discretion. Thank you for the clarification. Yes. And these are not droids? No. There's but only so many ways to make somebody not have information in their head anymore. They don't but necessarily have it in their head. They have it in a computer. Our, our pipelines are not maps drawn in leather that can, be that can be memorized over the space of an afternoon. They're highly encoded digital information kept on data pads. Mm -hmm. Retrieve the pads, wipe the computers, do whatever it is you need to do, whatever your skill set inclines you to do, so long as they no longer have access to the digital copies. Their memories are not going to be so good as to memorize our pipeline. You're not concerned about them having little pieces that might be useful? Bits and pieces uh, of the whole are not useful at all. Encrypted. Knowing the start and knowing the end are two very different things. Good enough. Now, in good faith, you seem to have a bit of a, uh, <clears throat> shall we say, risk of explosion. I'll show you the facilities. Make your judgment on to my worthiness. I know so many of you tall folk like to do that. And we'll remove them from one of you first. The remainder, get it after my information is safe. I'll make a deal. Works for me. When lives are on the line, it pays to judge and take analysis. Uh, make a um. What's the what's the role I'm thinking of? This is D and D. I'd say insight check, but uh, empath. It's not empathy. That's that's world of darkness. Um, I believe cool is established as the reading people. Yeah, make a cool role for me, Corsara. Difficulty two. Difficulty. Difficulty two. Yeah, because cool is the perception skill. <clears throat> Two successes, three advantages. You get the sense that this individual has adjusted their vocoder in order to make it read more sarcastic than they necessarily are based on body language. Like, the body language of this individual doesn't seem to match up with the way they're talking. Uh, with the attitude that they're talking with, I should clarify. Um, which just strikes you as interesting. Mm -hmm. That's what you pick up. What am I reading on his body language versus his sarcasm and his vocoder? Uh, his body language is fairly business, like business, like straightforward. Like, this is just a matter, like, this is just a series of transactions. Hmm. But he leads you through the warehouse back into a smaller room. Again, immaculately clean. This one has a series of diagnostic tables, uh, all of which have, all of which are seemingly very well kept up. Um, as well as a large automated surgery table. Um, there, it's sort of this. It's sort of this, like you know, it's like a doctor's office chair that can lay back into a table, except it's surrounded by mechanical arms with all variety of surgical implementation on it, uh, and a sort of a control panel off to one side that is sized for a creature of this gan's size. Uh, 
Please feel Assessing. free to take a look around. Take a look around. Uh, medicine check. Yeah. How skilled of a surgeon would you say you are? Well, not the best on Marsh at all, but certainly the best one for the price. Mm. Neri is a lot, lot of stuff. Yeah. You're sort, of, you're sort of looking around, just sort of scanning things. You're pretty certain that that uh, bit of technology over there was definitely scavenged off of like a high end medical droid and like turned into a, uh, you know, turned into an operable system. Okay. You're sort of like looking, it's like this seems very expensive. How often would you say something goes wrong during surgery? How often does anything go wrong in Nashada? Not encouraging. No. Don't bring people shooting up my clinic and you won't die on the table. Fair enough. Look over. I'm fine with it if you guys are. SDS the guinea pig. I mean, just the general situation. But <laughs> also, don't mind getting this shit out of me first, either. Oh, Vazia will look at Corsera. What do you think? If we're going to do this, We'll want to know that it works. What do you think, Nerys? What's your analysis? He has the equipment. Question is whether he can use it. I never doubted that he had the equipment. Can I make like a, a social assessment of this guy? Does he seem make a cool check? Legit. <laughs> Very cool, Jack. Difficulty two. Okay. Ah, With an that's advantage. Terrible. It's hard to yeah. tell. He's very. Okay. I, you've you you've never really interacted with Gans before, in mm -hmm. the first place. And mm -hmm. as a species, they're hard to read. Um, this individual particularly seems hard to read. Yep. Um, I do, for what it's worth, uh, have a thing. From uh, Consular, I think, uh, which is nobody's fool, so it's harder to trick me if that's what he's doing. Okay. But. Tell you what. If he kills me, well, talk? first of all, if he kills me, he's prob you're probably, probably he's going to blow up too, because, you know. But if he does and doesn't blow up, feel free to murder him. I'm glad or to not. take you up on that offer. Or not, either way, I'm not sure. I will say, um, Nuri's with that skill, you do know that he hasn't lied to you yet. Okay. But he also hasn't really answered any of your questions yet. No, no. <laughs> you see, he's very good at answering without answering. Well then, do we have a deal? Prove yourself on my companion first, when they are safely extracted of the problematic foreign objects, and you've proven that you can indeed perform this procedure, then we will have a deal. Oh, one for betting your life, one for betting the lives of your allies, are you? That was only when they only when they volunteer. That was a part of the deal already. So, well then, let's get you up on the table and ready for surgery, shall we? Alrighty, I'll admit. Usually, when somebody says they want to play doctor, this is not one ideal. What this is not the scenario they offer, but it I'm does sometimes you. involve the removal of foreign objects. But began tilts his head. Right, Pops I'm up sure on the that's table. one of your mammalian sex jokes. 
Uh, as he moves over towards the... I would like to assist. I am trained in surgery. Certainly. You can get the patient out of their clothes. I begin assisting. I have experience with that. Thank you very <laughs> much. I mean, unless you'd like me to cut through them, in which case, keep them on. I like the, uh, well, that's actually not true. I am not a big fan of these clothes, but I don't have other ones. And well, I don't mind that. Even though this is Narshida, in public, they generally frown on that. Or you just grab the attention of a hut. We stop the joking period of this now. There's a bit of a reverberation in the vocoder. Yep, I will get up on the table. All right, get up on the table, remove clothing, get ready for something. Yep. Now, uh, this will pinch a little bit. Make me a... Let me pull up a skill list. Discipline. Um... Uh, make me a medicine survival resilience lightsaber if it hurts too much resilience check resilience oh good I'm great difficulty at five um, yeah yeah it's about how that was gonna turn out. You feel a slight sting in your neck and pass the fuck out. Okay. You all watch as the as the the uh, anesthesia takes effect real quick, and then he goes to work. If you'll squeamish, does he bother to scan for where the where the foreign objects are? If you're uh -huh. squeamish, you might wish to look away. As a scanner goes across <laughs> the body, he's just gonna he's just gonna dig until he finds them. It's yeah, fine. that was that was Corsair's concern was if he didn't bother scanning, we're gonna have some problems here. A, yeah. You watch as a, you watch as a light scan goes across the body, highlighting several things. <laughs> this scanner seems to be much more detailed than the one that you had on the ship, as it sort of as it actually it goes through again. It goes through the layers and layers of tissue and highlights and then sort of locks on scans and then brings up in sort of a, a 3D representation of what the items are and exactly where they're embedded. I just like the idea of, I'm going to take a guess and say it's here. Like five minutes later, nope, I was wrong. <laughs> Gouts of blood. <laughs> yeah, that was messy. <laughs> it's fine. I usually get I usually get my guesses right on at least the sixth try. Yeah. Your friend was always a cyborg, right? No. Uh, <laughs> why do I have extra parts? Where's the Allen wrench? <laughs> uh, analyzing the scans, you can see that the um the device that is in the brain is actually this sort of like multi-pronged star that has a variety of wiring and LED, sort of like, like you know bits of bits and pieces of lighting on it it doesn't look like it has a charge of any kind though it definitely looks like it can it can like do something but it doesn't have any like explosive charge mm -hmm. and these are ah. these are scanning through it scanning through all the other ones there are definitely explosive charges on the ones that are on the ribs and on the knees but they seem to be fairly small as he's he sort of looking, checking his monitors, reading things, muttering to himself. Uh, we'll start with the brain. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> there is uh, a series of arms. <laughs> Uh, just sort of come down from this upper apparatus and surround the head of the unconscious. Uh, I'll make a couple of rolls. Uh, 
NPC talent to reduce the difficulty of brain surgery. Something like that. So, it takes a while. Uh, are any of you not watching him perform surgery on your friend? Well, your ally. I'm watching. Nope. Friend is still perhaps <laughs> overstating it at this point. So, yeah, Avazia doesn't even remember your name. <laughs> that is fair. If he slips, neither will she. Uh <laughs> Go ahead, and those of you that are watching, make cool rolls for me. Difficulty four. Sorry, which one's difficulty? Is that the purple I one? all those dice yeah. in there. Oh, yeah, because uh, the GM dice pool applies to you guys, too. Hang on. Let me fix this. <laughs> I mean, if you want to let me just take that roll. But... <laughs> which one's difficulty? Uh, uh, purple ones. ones. All right. It's purple. Roll again, <laughs> Heck yes. I would. I like the first roll better. Yeah. Well. So, course Rath difficulty all failures. Course rather Devasia. It's not that you haven't seen people being cut up, cut open and cut apart before. Obviously you have. You've done it. You've never seen it happen slowly. And you've never seen it happen bloodily. Because typically your lightsaber cauterizes the wound, so body parts sort of fall apart. And a Vazi uses a war blade. <laughs> The Warblade still uses an energy field, which cauterizes wounds. Like that, That's why Warblades cut so effectively, because they have this energy field around them. That's also why they can parry lightsabers. Um, so it's, it's, you've, never been, you've never been forced to watch it this long, is the thing. And after a while, it just, it, it just starts to turn your stomachs. Of course, Wrath, yours more than Avasia's, but even Avasia, yours too. It's just, it's the being forced to watch it slowly happen in front of you that is messing with you. Nereus, you don't have a stomach anymore. You're fine. Uh, yeah. and, and you're also a medical droid. Um, you've never seen this level of surgery enacted on this scale, so it, it is a little, it's still weird, and this is the first time you've ever seen a body cut open like this, but for you, it's more interesting than it is nauseating. But hours pass. And as the hours pass, those of you that have to turn away for your stomach, uh, you you hear ting 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 ting. Ting 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 ting. Uh Neries, as you're watching, these are these are each of these sounds are the sounds of one of these small devices being very carefully extracted from the body. And then a small welding torch <laughs> cutting through and welding together any electronics on them, and then very casually tossing them to the side where they tink, 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 tink on the ground without doing anything. Hmm. You watch as the as all of the incisions are sewn back up with a la with sort of a laser with a laser suture, which like basically folds all the pieces back together puts the skull back on welds it shut puts the skin back together welds it closed kind of thing and after a few hours the machinery moves away and this expanding dome 
uh, semicircles up and encloses around Estes' still unconscious form and fills with this viscous green liquid. Those of you that are weak of stomach can turn around now. And uh, you turn around to see that now Esty is resting in a back to bath. And you can watch as the, the bits of remaining scar from the surgery begin to very rapidly heal over. The uh, Laku comes over with a, you know, goes over to a small container filled, you know, of this metal tray that's sort of in this indented semicircle, brings it over to Avasya and Corsarath and holds it up. Inside, you see this bloody pile of bits of metal, all of which are these, you know, they're about, they're roughly the size of like a quarter. Um, and, uh, and, and all of them are in these sort of like star like shapes that looked like they at one point had clamps on them as well. Um, several of them have a sort of like a brick, like an, like an extra, like an extra brick of material attached to them. Uh, one of which just has nothing. It's just the star with some cut wiring in it. These will be the devices that were inside your friend, presumably that are inside you as well. If you can't look. Of course, I'll take a look and see yeah. what they are, if you can. Yeah, Vazi will examine them. Me and mechanics rolls, both of you. Difficulty two. Series two, if you'd like. Uh, sure. I'll try. Ah, the good old threat. Ooh. So Avasia and Corsarath, you're not mechanics. You take things apart, not put them back together. Um, unless you're sort of looking at these, you like you assume there's some sort of charge. But you have no idea specifically. Neri's with the one you're not 100 certain what they are. You can definitely tell that at least the the ones that were on the um the ribs and knee are definitely like small explosive charges. You're not certain what the one in the brain was though. Okay. Um, does it, from what I can tell, does it, do they all seem like definitely deactivated? Like they won't do anything? Yeah, it uh, seems like, it of... seems like in the process he cut the, he cut whatever power source was feed, was fueling them. Okay. Um, may I take this? I will, uh, point at the, at the one that was in her brain. It's a little bit odder. If you like, I have no use for it. Thank Evan, you. I want that. <laughs> Take all of them for analysis. We want to find out what they are and where they came from. These are explosives. Uh, I can take them all. Yes, we want to know where they came from, especially. And as much data as we can get is important. I will take them and put them in the bag of holding. AKA your chest cavity. Yeah, uh-huh. Uh... Tink, tink. I do have a request. Neris pauses and tries to think this through. Oh God. Um, there are bones inside my chassis that were placed bare there by likely the same person that put these in my companions. I indicate the, the, um, uh, explosives. My scanner is not as uh, words um, not as sophisticated as yours. Can you check and see if I have anything like that? It would likely be smaller. I do not have flesh. It looks at you for a minute. Adjust the gas mask. A bone robot, you say? Yes. Interesting. Have you seen one before? No. I'll gladly run a scan for you after your half of the bargain is done. Excellent. I would like to insight check that. Make a cool roll. Okay. I want to know specifically if he's seen anything like me before, because correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, Dothfaxadi has been making more. 
is what we've been told. Is it still difficulty two? Oh yeah, difficulty two. Okay. Mm, how about the triumph? Yeah. She's not lying, no. Shit. Okay. He seems more incredulous than anything else. Gotcha. Like, okay. like he doesn't quite believe you. Yeah. How long will she need to recover? Another and hour. Quickly. Back to works quickly. Off. <laughs> I look at Avasia and Corsera. I should have checked earlier, but I don't know. Do not know. Checked. What was inside of you? Yes. Fair enough. As Neres thinks about what they should have done, and the other two sort of stare at this pile of bloody material, and the fourth of you rests comfortably in a bacter tank. That's where we're going to take our break. I'll go back in just a few minutes. For those of you that are watching on Twitch, please stay tuned for these commercial messages. And uh, remember, when we take our break, you take your break. So stand up, stretch your legs, move around, do whatever you need to do. Use the bathroom, grab a drink, grab some food, and we'll be back in just a few minutes.
We're back. A dinosaur story. So, Esty, you wake up to the feeling and sound of liquid being drained from around you. Yep. Shell opens above you, mm. and you feel really refreshed. Like, you feel very limber, your skin feels nice and smooth, your hair feels fresh. Cool. Because Bacta is basically liquid stem cells, and yep. everything just heals and refreshes. You look down, ah. a lot of your recent scarring is gone. I feel like we've gone over this before within the confines of this campaign, but at this point, would it be Bacta or Colto? Bacta. Colto is 300 years ago. Colto is the first. Yeah. Colto was the first iteration of Bacta. It very rapidly became Bacta afterwards. I always picture aloe vera gel. Yeah, basically, it's like yeah. breathable aloe vera. Well, Consistency-wise, anyway. Ten out of ten would get would get explosives and tracking and other mysterious objects removed again. They are out, right? Yes, that they are. I have them here. Oh, thank God. You're still alive. Will wonders never cease? So now let's go find some information and then get him to do that three more times. It would have been hilarious if he had like put you under, acted like he was taking them all out, but just left them all in and gave you all right. <laughs> That's why. Oh god, I, I can watch. deactivate this. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I watched. <laughs> Just out of curiosity, Doc. Yes. We know what the bomby things were. Mm -hmm. What was in here? I'm not certain. We've got them for analysis, so we'll find out later. It's some sort of it's some sort of electronic relay device, but I couldn't tell what it was meant to relay. Like a transmitter. Kind of, but not a powerful one. Wouldn't have worked more than, like, as far as as far as like a communication transmitter is concerned, it wouldn't have worked for anything more than a few yards away. I don't know what exactly it was meant to transmit. Huh. It's hard. Uh, we got a we got a count of how many foreign objects were in. SD last time, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, uh, four. Is, are there uh, exactly four are there four plus, ob plus plus the other thing? It was four plus four plus one in the brain, so there should be yeah. five objects in the bowl. There are mm -hmm. five objects in the bowl. Yep. Good. Not all from SD, but there are five objects. <laughs> <laughs> he snuck one in. <laughs> SD explodes. There's just, there's just four devices in a tennis ball. <laughs> <laughs> He snuck one in poorly. He was, he was just playing Operation over there with Esty's body. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Then I suppose it's time we got some information out of Republic hands. Pulls a fucking yep. small horse out of your leg. <laughs> I would have so many questions. Mammal anatomy. <laughs> route. That's a... why I was taking the ivermectin. Yeah. <laughs> For Charlie horses, right? <laughs> no, it's Charlie right. horse dewormer, goddamn. No, it's for a horse named Charlie. <laughs> uh, Alright, where are we gonna find these? Well, from what information I was able to gather from when they broke into my associate's location, they seem to be operating out of some area within the Shadow Ward. This one looks at the group of you, realizes none of you are reacting. Off. Oh, Sorry, well, that's because I wasn't listening. <laughs> but say that again. They said they seem to be operating somewhere within the Shadow Ward. Would I know what the Shadow Ward is? Make an Underworld check. No, it's okay. 
The chance I might having been deployed to various places previously. Yeah, that's my the world diff what? Would Outer Rim Um Outer Rim might work. Uh either Outer Rim or Underworld Diff three. Okay. Well they're the same, so let's go with Underworld. I haven't put any points in Outer Rim yet. Nope. Really? Um, got two triumphs, but you got three yeah, failures like rolled into it. Yeah, canceled it all out. I mean, not the triumph part of it, but the so, success part. I'll say with the failure, but you get two triumphs and a failure. The triumphs still are still triumphs, though. Um, so you're not familiar with whatever he's referring to as the Shadow War. What would you? What, what's what's some information you think you might know about the Narshada underworld, though, related to? Where I mean, based on her, based on based on her history, probably a fair amount about Hut, some individual Hut clans, um, and I figure she was probably. I, I wouldn't. I would imagine she was probably sent out here uh, once she was working for the Empire on at least a few occasions. So. Uh, maybe contact or two. Uh, I don't know. So you're not familiar with anything called the Shadow Ward, but you do know that if you wanted to know basically anything there was to know on Narshida, there are a series of Imperial intelligence cells that operate in in and around the Hot Cartels. Um. Particularly, there is a. Let me. Uh, is the cartel? In uh, particularly. There is a member of the Narshida Hut cartels uh, called uh, Nabura, N A B O O R A, uh, who was a point of int point of intel contact for you on Narshida about any and all underground activity. And you happen to know uh, that he's not the most liable Imperial Intelligence contact in that he is very willing to sell information to anyone who pays the right price, whatever that price may be. Um, and for him in particular, he is a lover of exotic things. Uh... He's, he fancies himself a collector, uh, which you know what that means for huts. Um, but for him in particular, he likes to collect weapons. All manner of fancy, exotic weapons. Okay. Well... Someone we can check with. Do you have anything particularly unique weaponry wise that we can get rid of? Let's talk about this elsewhere. Doctor, appreciate the work. You're quite welcome. If the rest of you explode, well, you have my number. He says, knowing that none of you have his number. What can you do to us if we explode? Get a bucket. I really hate to say it, but I like this doctor. Let's go. <laughs> yes, let us go. I don't. You all head back to the door. Yep. It op The lights <laughs> shut off door opens you step out 
<laughs> doors close behind you. As the doors close behind you, the far door opens back up. That slug person with a no bag now walks in, looks down the hallway. Ba opens the door, walks in, close it behind them. I really fucking hate this planet. All right, so. <laughs> There's a there's somebody I know we can talk to who's gonna know who's gonna have information for us more than probably. We're gonna have to do we're gonna have to give him something. He has very few morals, but he is that works in our favor. He likes weapons, unique, exotic interesting weapons have such a weapon me no right anybody else I mean, there's the obvious answer of our lightsabers, but I doubt anyone will be willing to part with theirs. Yeah, no, not so much. Um, that said, we have crystals we aren't using. Who knows? He might have. He might have just a hilt. Potentially. But I don't think we should go in hoping for that result. No, but it's potentially Hold on just a second. Do 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 da 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 Sorry I had to send the boss an email. Um But it would be good to have another option if we have one. Otherwise, we can go in with the crystals and see if we can bargain with that. I'm open to other suggestions. I do not carry many weapons. I have some anesthetic that can be weaponized, but beyond that, I have my lightsaber and a training saber. That is all. Yeah, aesthetic is, or uh, anesthetic isn't something that he can put on a wall and, and, and impress people with. Ah, I see. No. It's a collector thing. I have nothing I'm willing to part with. First, Raph, other, if you've got other thoughts, I'm all for it. The training saber might be worth if you're willing to part with that one, Nariz. Are you particularly attached to that training saber? No. But is that a collector's item? It's certainly not common, but I was more thinking the training saber properly modified with some of the spare crystals we have into a true lightsaber would be more of a collector's item. What spare crystals do we have? Because well, several, several that we haven't identified back on the ship. Also, the crystals that you're going to be taking out of your current... Yes, also the, uh, the... The uh, what the hell is the name of the basic crystals that I can't remember the name of? Ilum crystals. The island, yeah, the island crystals that we, the Ilum crystals that we currently have to remove from our sabers to replace as well. You've already removed and replaced. Yeah. Is 
yeah, it's up to you guys. That's it's it's a contact I've got. Somebody you can potentially. Like with the doctor, we can see what the price is and the results. You do, we can. You do know, uh, SD with a hut. It's not a. It's not like a. It wouldn't. It. it it's not negotiation. It's a gift, not a yeah. price. <laughs> yeah. It's a gift, and if he likes it, then you might get the information you're looking for. Right. But the craftsmanship of lightsabers is tends to be coveted throughout the galaxy do i know if he has a lot of lightsabers so far or you know he doesn't have any lightsabers well that would be a bonus that's my only concern is like we go there it's like oh good that'll go with the other 19 that i have in my lightsaber wall i've got a wing <laughs> and as far as you know he does not have any lightsabers you know he last time you checked uh he had several finely crafted like you know war blades and melee weapons of varying like societal descents um he had an act yeah you know he had the he has like the, the the items of note that you recall uh there is a mandalorian rancor blade uh which is a which is basically like sort of a great sword forged out of a out of um it's called a rancor blade because it was the first time one was made was to kill a rancor in one-on-one -on -one combat uh and that particular style of blade has carried on through man through certain kinds of mandalorian warriors over the centuries uh this one in particular is said to have been one of the very early ones made out of uh an unidentified metal that is thought to be the precursor to modern um Scar? beskar yeah uh, thought to be a precursor to modern Beskar, Beskar, um, and that's like sort of the that's like sort of the crown jewel of his of his web of his collection. Mm -hmm. Next to that, he's got you know, um, he's got the um, the ion can uh, the 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 portable ion cannon of uh, oh god name. Uh, he's got uh the he's got the portable ion cannon of Candorus Ordo. Uh, he's got the he's got several different kinds of. Oh, why well, can't I think of the name? Um. And humanoid species, silver hair. Achani. Achani. He's got several Achani weapon, like Achani martial arts weapons, um, high quality blasters, as well as one, as well as a bowcaster said to belong to a, you know, said to belong to a uh, long forgotten like Wookiee war chief. So he has a quite an eclectic collection. As far as you recall, no lightsabers. That sounds like you would want something with a story behind it. That does seem to be a running theme from what you recall, Esty. Mm-hmm. Do you have anything that fits that bill? It's possible Unless, to make up a story. If, if you're good, but not uh, nothing that has a story beyond our story. My training saber did this. I pull out the half of the mask that I still have carrying around because... <laughs> I never got rid of it of the um of the apprentice uh Flexati's apprentice that we yeah. murdered. Mm -hmm. It's dramatic looking. Actually, <laughs> that might that legitimately could work. Yes, that could add the the flair to the lightsaber that it needs. He also, do we still have that mask we found on that dark side planet? Uh, the Mandalorian one? Yes. Was it with our remember. gear that we retrieved? I don't remember if if um the Wookiee. Uh, not Aaron, um, 
Jack's Buffy character. What was his name? Damn it. Um, I do not recall. I don't remember. I have to look up my notes. Um, but I I thought we gave. I thought he had it. I'm not entirely sure though. Uh, Graz Tatha. Yeah. Yep. Yes. I don't remember who ended up with that. It's not on my sheet, though. Uh, he doesn't have a. He does not have a mask in his inventory. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know what happened to it. Me either. Well, let's go back to the ship for now, I guess. Put together what we can. Yes, yeah, so let's, to be perfectly honest, Black Pyramid might know better where to find what we're looking for as well. True. Oh, sorry. I'm just looking. Nice. I'm just looking through his notes to see if there's anything else that was that he might have left, but I don't think so. Yes, let's let's regroup and coordinate and figure out how we're going to go about this task. All right. So you regroup with the pyramid and Ronan. Both of whom have been keeping basically an eye on the location. As you regroup, Ronan sort of like leans over. So, did you find anything useful? Well, he's certainly proven that he can do the job. What we need now is a lead to try and fulfill the task he set to do the rest of it. Hmm. What's, what's, what's the task? Apparently, some Republic agents have been digging for information on Sith and Empire operatives on Nar Shaddaa and accidentally stumbled their way into his information pipeline, and he wants that information out of their hands. Supposedly, they've been operating out of the Shadow Ward. Sounds familiar, but I can't think of what... He sort of, like, stares off into... Well, stares. The helmet turns in one direction for a minute. Means something. Means something specific, but uh, nope, not there. Hey, boss. The uh, the pyramid turns and looks. Got a ward. Shadow ward or shadow town. Ward. Might be a colloquialism. Probably. If it's if he means Shadow Town, well, the Shadow Town is a high profile ward. It's a place where the Empire keeps all their most dangerous criminals on Nar Shadda. High priority targets. Good place to hide if you're looking to hide from the Empire, considering that they pretty much consider the entire place under their security. No idea where you'd start looking, though. I assume you have a contact? We do. We need a fancy weapon. Mm. Well, I assume you have an idea of what that might be. Otherwise, we can go knock over a weapons dealer. I know this hut, Nabora, he has a really nice collection. Yeah, yeah, things. that's who we're talking about. <laughs> uh. I don't think robbing him is the way to get information. <laughs> <laughs> we rob him and then come back like I have the weapon for you. That's great. Look, uh, you already have the mount on your wall right there. Yeah. Looks I perfect. think it would fit right there perfectly. Really well. Really tie the room together. <laughs> no, yes. We we would need a weapon with some kind of story, I gather, if we're going to make a gift to Nabora. Yeah. I mean, I don't know anybody that carries that kind of merchandise on Nar Shaddaa that he hasn't already cleaned out. 
I'm sure you'll think of something. And he starts leading you back to the ship. <laughs> oh, back to your pickup. Back to the garbage chute that you get yeah. picked up at. Well, the current best plan of action is to fabricate a story. Yes. I am not good at lying. Avasia. Look toward Avasia because <laughs> historically, you were the one, the one with the best role, so... Yes. Avasia, world class liar, one point in the skill. <laughs> I know. <coughs> Can you fabricate a story with these? I will hold out my, my trading saber and the broken mask from the apprentice. Mm. I can try. I mean, it might be easier to embellish a story than to fabricate. For sure. It it usually is, if you have to lie. You know, <clears throat> take something that actually happened, or that you actually did, or had a part in, change the names around, change the location, make it sound more epic, add some packing music, and you got yourself a story. Right. To be fair... The task that we engaged in that led to us acquiring this mask was not exactly small in scope. No, that was the spice mines. <laughs> Dying. Um, oh, no. What, um, I'm sorry, what were you like handing to her or showing to her uh, that we're going to? My training saber, um, which was attached to my arm. Um, and the broken mask from the Sith apprentice, who, um, when we went to right. the Spice Mines to rescue, to, to like do the, mm -hmm. the breakout, um, they, uh, landed and intercepted us as we were like about to leave and we fought them and oh, yeah, we stabbed a bunch. Oh yeah, I remember hearing about that. There were some pissed people. Super pissed. Ronan thinks about it for a second. You know, I remember hearing about uh, this hut cartel out in the uh, Outer Rims that got their shit stolen by a bunch of, like, rebels. That was you guys? That's what the, that's what they believe anyway. Uh, out of curiosity, what cartel? All of my old notes. Um, oh, it was further along. Mara is the one who has all the notes. <laughs> Sorry. Mara yeah. is the smart one. It was the Basadi cartel. <clears throat> ah, okay. Oh, yeah, we were with Zilda. Oh, they were good. They were fun. Nobody I personally has interacted with them. Good. If you're going to tell a hut about the legend of a sword, you might not want to... Mention that you stole no. it from, an, from a... Yeah. No, that would be bad. I mean, even if it is a rival cartel, it's still a hut. It's the principle of the yeah. matter. The last. Is it, sorry, is it the sword or a mask that we have from them? It's uh, the mask is from the uh, Sith Apprentice who was there. Mm -hmm. The uh, lightsaber is just uh, Nereza's lightsaber. Okay. <clears throat> what color were um, Zilda's lightsabers? Zelda's lightsabers? Red. Yep. You got red crystals. We do. Ooh, 
lightsaber held by the Archon of a fallen order of gray Jedi mm -hmm. feels like a good story. Zilda's lightsaber was a basic lightsaber, so. So do we want to try offering him all these things or just the crystals? Zilda's lightsaber and the mask of his last conquest. It could work. It's not mm -hmm. entirely a lie. No. <clears throat> it could work. And it puts one of our Archon stories out there within the legends of Nar Shaddaa to be held up for all time. You do know, Make a legend out of the man. You do know uh, that the reason that uh, you, you the three of you do, Esty doesn't. You do know that the reason Zilda was um, uh, was uh, you know in that that you guys were along with Zilda is because he basically had dedicated his life to hunting and killing slavers, particularly huts. Yep. Uh, so. You would be you would be giving you would be giving a hut the weapon of someone who specialized in killing huts and disrupting. Yeah, their that's activities. a trophy. Yeah, no, which would definitely be one hell of a trophy for a hut. Yeah, it's not the worst idea. I, I'm for it. Yeah, I think it'll work. So, there's a ride back to the docking bay. Uh, upon arrival, the uh, debris of the formerly uh, disintegrated individuals uh, has all been cleared away. You are let back onto the ship. You have access to the various utilities the ship offers. What are you going to try to do to fabricate this narrative and lightsaber? Oh, first off, swap the the uh, training saber emitter with a with an actual red Elam crystal. Okay. And uh, whoever would like to can make me a mechanics check using your. You have your you, you uh, have your lightsaber toolkit. It's not your lightsaber specifically, unless Mara's is doing it, unless Neri's is doing it. So. Uh, Neri's will do it. Yeah. It'll be a mechanics check of no difficulty. Okay. Um, I would like to use flow with this. Okay. Because why not? I want this to succeed. And you get an automatic advantage from your lightsaber toolkit. Awesome. <clears throat> okay. Um, sorry, let me just check if there's anything I have to add with flow. Force die. Force die. Okay. Do star mechanics. Mm. Um, I'll spend a destiny point. <laughs> okay. So that I can use that. Spend your last destiny point. Yep. Get rank some conflict. Yep. You get a success and three advantages. Mm hmm. Uh, so also you can spend those advantages uh, to so the success switches out the lightsaber crystal. Also you can spend those advantages to add a few uh, alterations to the lightsaber in order to make it seem more like Zelda's lightsaber. The big issue that you're having is that Zelda's lightsaber was built out of the out of the tooth of a large creature, yeah, mm -hmm. um, which you do not have available. Nope. Um, you know what I 
do have is I don't know what what this was exactly, uh, but I have Graz's a Wookie totem. Would that possibly be a tooth? Um, totem is a carved wooden okay. item, I believe. Okay. It wasn't really specified back when he gave them us those. Let me check on his character sheet real quick. <clears throat> yeah, no. Um, as far as I can tell, it's just a, it would be like a wooden totem. Okay. All right. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah, I'm I'm trying to modify it to look. Oh goodness. If if this guy has met Zilda or knows what his lightsaber is supposed to look like, then I don't think we'll be able to like if he if he knows it that specifically, we won't be able to fool him. So I'm trying to just make it look <clears throat> impressive. I mean, you could potentially just find some sort of source of bone to use to carve up the, uh, to, to transform the hilt. <laughs> That's subtle, John. That's very, very subtle. Wow. What? Wow. Tooth is bone. No, it's, it's, it's not. It is different, but. <laughs> Close enough. I mean, we could also just go out. Get some extra. How hard is it to find a random calf hound on Narshada? Pretty hard, but you could just go merc some people and... <laughs> My point exactly. <laughs> I'm sure that won't cause any negative, negative emotions at all. Eh. Let's be honest, there are enough factions on Narshada that the odds that we piss off the faction we are currently trying to deal with in a random find somebody and kill them and take their bone situation is <laughs> not great. Find, some find someone, kill them, and take, take their, their bones. bones. Situation. The take their bones aspect. Take their bones yeah. situation. Yeah. Yes. What, you haven't had that situation before? No, Happens to me all the time. Definitely one that would cause dark side points, though, was the more the point I was making. Nariz spends an inordinate amount of time staring at this thing and then decides that he's going to donate one of his ribs to this cause. How are you going to get it? Uh, do I have a panel in there that I can pop off and get access You've to? You've never been able to access your bones. Uh, I've had, Bras I've had... access your bones. Or, or, or crack, or crack access your bones. Crack head. Yeah, but I would be aware of, like, how he got into yeah. it. Mm -hmm. You yeah. can't reach it. If you like trying to tickle your spine through your stomach. Mm. I maintain you can do that. It just hurts real bad. <laughs> real bad, yeah. Do you also, have... uh, uh, Neri is a little bit more uh, cylindrically thick than most humanoids. <laughs> do you droid. have any mechanical knowledge? Me? Yes. Not a ton. Right. Does any of the rest of you have a critical knowledge? I don't remember. Ronin might. Ronin might. I'm not nothing, but I'm not. I'll remind you that Ronin had to hunt and peck on the keyboard. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No. Black no, Pyramid would be the one who might. Thank you very much. <laughs> you just need to pop off this panel. He's super so, enthusiastic about it, but. <laughs> I can do that. I know how to pop off a panel. Go ahead and give me a mechanics roll. Difficulty one. Okay. I mean, it's me. I'm still going to fail somehow. I'm going to flip a, I'm going to flip a light side. I'm going to flip a dark side point on you too to upgrade the difficulty. Oh, uh, God. Thanks. Made it. Hey. All right. Two and a threat. So, yeah. 
You get in there. You root around inside Neri's chest cavity for a little bit, which feels weird. Like, you've never really thought about it before, but Neri's can use the force, which means they're a living, sentient creature, and you're just in there. Like, full arm and shoulder. Uh, but you, you manage to get the panel loose and, and uh, extricate a single rib from inside. Like, I'm just going to say it's not the first time that... that, that 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 uh sd has been up to her elbow in in something that is connected to the force um reseal the panel close it out come back out and you just have this bone that reeks of dark side energy as you hold it like you hadn't noticed it while it was in Neri's, but once it's out and open all of you can feel Dark side I'm of the very force. sorry, but she absolutely is like, Ugh! I try and catch it. That's my bone. <laughs> she oh. doesn't know that. <laughs> yeah, I know. You haven't told her it's no. your bone. Uh uh-uh. And you look, I and it is this. Anything. It is this. First, she knows you just keep a dead body <laughs> inside. <laughs> It is this long humanoid... It's a walking droid yeah. reliquary. It is this long humanoid rib that you can see now SD has Sith runes carved into it. Drop that. And SD already dropped it. You have I it. dropped I it. I try and catch it. I oh, try yeah, you already, yeah, you caught it. Yeah. You got it. You have yep, it. Yep. What the actual... Fuck. It is my rib. I'm sorry, what? It is my second rib from the left side. Infrascapula? <laughs> yes. See. There are so many questions and I don't even know where to... Like, Do you want to it, tell this story right now, Nerys? You know what? No, 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 no. Yes. You have a rib. It's it, 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 it's it, it's a it's a dark side Sith rib. I am cool with uh, with that amount of information for now. Darth Vexati has been doing experiments on animating dead bodies. Oh, I that was tracks. One of them. A long time ago. It was painful. It involved carving these into all of my bones, which are within this chassis. Right. While you were still alive. That all tracks 100%. Did you know of this? No. Nope. I'm not real. I I got told to do things. I went and did them. I was not in her council. You do know that that's the kind of thing the Sith Council would kill you for because one hell of a power grab. Right. And that's dangerous to them. I'm willing to bet he has not Told anybody. Right. Well, he has um, continued. From that's, what we know. Yeah, I'm also said. fairly certain the man might be dead. <laughs> this is a thousand percent something I would expect from him. Like, there is nothing about this that shocks me other than the fact that I was holding a... Your... You know what? I need a drink. I'm going to go get a drink. You do what you're going to do. I'm going to go get a drink. You get to if there's the- any consolation, Nereez, there's a good chance Fluxati is dead, considering we left as the Emperor was arriving. Oh, no. There's virtue. Uh, they- Don't count him out. They could be working together. They could be working together. They could be 
They could not be working together. And there might be another, Luxardi might have other options. You get, you get to the bar, Esty, and Ronan's already there holding a drink out towards you. <laughs> Thank you. You're a deer. He, he, he actually, he does pull the helmet up and off just so he can drink. And you do see um, pale skin, yellow eyes, white hair. Okay. As he just drinks, puts the helmet back on. <laughs> Species? Um, seems a Chani. Okay. Based on that quick glance. Okay. I am going to put this into the hilt to make it look more like Zilda's weapon. It also carries the right force signature, considering how aggressively into the darker sides of the Greja of the Twilight Code Zilda was. This will also make it very interesting, I think. Indeed. <laughs> Leave it to me to have a day where being, be, being drugged into unconsciousness by a likely serial killer sociopath on Narshada was not the creepiest thing to happen to me. Go ahead and make me another mechanics roll with no difficulty theories to apply the bone. Okay. Still flowing. I'm going to put that force in there. Hey! I'm not going to use the force this time. I got enough. With with a triumph? You, yeah. You actually dismount the uh lights the interiors of the lightsaber from the from the old hilt and just remount it into the into the rib you hollow it out there's more than enough space and you manage to make a fairly it's a little it's maybe a little bit longer than zilda's lightsaber was um but it's a fair enough facsimile and with some strategically placed and tied off and maybe glued uh like cloth wrapping you it like it, you look at it, and you know it's not Zilda's lightsaber, but if you were only looking at it at a glance, you would mistake. You could mistake it for it. And so someone who only knows Zilda's lightsaber by reputation or by other people's reports well, would probably accept it. Yep. This will work. You do All right. you you do feel a little bit of numbness on your left side. Like it's not something that, it's not something that you that you like wouldn't actively notice in day to day. Uh you just suddenly you, you as you're finishing this and you're you're sort of anchoring this together, you do feel like a little bit of that total body awareness that you have as far as you're aware, it's unusual for a droid. It's just sort of numb right down here. So. As you finish up, and the rest of you are presented with a like a fang lightsaber. Anybody need to do anything before we head out? Unless there's any other preparations anyone else needs, I think we're as prepared as possible for this. Ronan and the pyramid sort of look between the group of you and themselves. So he's wanted by the Republic and the Sith. And last time I was on Nar Shaddaa, I definitely disintegrated a hut. So we're going to stay behind on this one. 
just because we'd be more of a liability. Fair enough. Legit. So, good luck. We'll keep the ship safe. All right. I will... I will, uh, since I don't need this anymore... Communicator, uh, I have a communicator on me if need be. Got it. Just give us a shot if you need us. Yep. Yeah, make our way out. So. I can make the introduction. This is going to sound more. Incredible if the story and everything comes from one of you because I wasn't there. Are you going with your designated liar, Avasia, or the one that's actually yeah. good at it, Corsareth? So who is <laughs> actually better at lying than I am? Like, <laughs> if, if it's a deception role? If it's a deception roll, she's actually better than me. It's when it's it's when it's like coercion or charm or anything that uses presence that I'm better. Mm -hmm. So, who am I introducing to? I mean, I'm introducing all of this, but who am I handing off to? Do you want to handle this one of us here? Or do you want to hand off to both of us as a pair? I can do that as well. I've I... just, in my experience, one person, if there's a story that needs to be delivered with falsehoods, the more people you have in the adding of the story, the more likely it is that it goes wrong. Right. Using too many lies, are we? No, no, we're honestly Super telling, straight. we're telling a fairly straightforward story. We're just substituting the weapon. Mm -hmm. Yes, for sure. But still, so it's up to you guys. I can butter him up a little I, bit. Actually, you can uh, butter up a cut without a bathtub full of butter. I would feel more comfortable if we did it together. Okay. Mm -hmm. Use some force and hopefully get enough of them to be able to add some boosts, mechanically speaking. You can't use the flow now. For those skill checks, can you? No, I can't. I'd have to do it then. Yeah. All right. So, you head to the taxi landing, hail a cab, and head to the heart of Narshada. Narshada is separated into innumerable wards, which are effectively neighborhood. You know, they're varying levels of the of the cities and of the citywide infrastructure that go from the highest of heights to the lowest of depths. Um, each one known for its own various things, and each one known, you know, each one having different reasons for you to go there or not go there. For meeting with huts, there is primarily one uh, area that you would go to arrange a meeting and then to actually have the meeting outside of their individual palaces, uh, which are highly secured. Um, so you, yeah, so you end up landing on the promenade, which is sort of a centrally focused marketplace slash meeting area. It is, 
it is where the hut cartels meet with representatives of the alliance of the republic and the sith empire it does however mean that in addition to trying to broker this meeting you will have to move through areas where the republic and the sith are at their most surveillancey considering that it is where they both where they publicly are both located So you land. The taxi lets you off onto the outer ring of the promenade, this large square structure that is sort of floating, hovering in the middle of the in the middle of uh, the convergence of graphics. <laughs> Towering marketplaces, uh, multi-store, multi-tiered, you know, uh, uh, mall structures with. Various stores selling various things, all brightly advertised in neon signs with holographic dancers outside trying to entice the next customer. Each one as you go down in a increasingly, uh, depending on the species, either erotic or disturbing level of undress. Uh, and on the ground there are these sort of eternally that indicate a proper walkway and some vain effort to keep the foot traffic from uh, slowing to a standstill. You navigate your way through the crowd into the central promenade wherein there sits this massive golden statue of a hut. Specifically, it is the golden statue of Karaga Uh, Karaga the Unyielding, who is the supreme mogul of the Hut Cartel. All of which you can learn, because there's a nice handy informational tourist plaque at the base of this massive statue. Uh, they are referred to as the supreme power of Hut, the unquestioned ruler of the Hut domain, and the paragon of the Hut species. One to which all Huts should strive to be. And their statue has a small little bell for a hat. Esty, you know that typically when you try to arrange a meeting with Nobora, there are two places that you can sort of set up a um, uh, a cold drop that'll get picked up by one of Nobora's henchmen, where you can leave a indication for a meet. Uh, you can go to the Slippery Slopes Cantina, which okay. you know to be a haven of intelligence operatives on both sides. Uh, or you can go to uh one. Uh, you can go to which one of the casinos that hovers nearby that you can get direct a direct lift to from the promenade. Um, it is. The Star Cluster Casino. Okay. Uh, if you go to the Star Cluster Casino, which is which has significantly less presence on both sides, um, you can there's a drop location there as well. The Star Cluster is also the place where Nabora spends most of their time. Star Cluster, it absolutely is. The less people, the better. Okay. It's not that there's less people; it's just that there's less Republican Sith operatives. Sorry, less people who matter. <laughs> So, in this situation, yeah. you throw a few credits around, end up getting a lift to the star cluster, which is which, yep. which is visible from the promenade. It's just a it's a large hovering domed casino that it's like just off the promenade. You get a hover car taking you up there. You land on the landing pad of the casino, and inside you see what is basically all of Las Vegas crammed into one small building. Oh, small building. One large building. It's like if you could host all of Las Vegas on the Hindenburg. As far as, you know, scaling on. 
sure there's some people who wish that you would host all of Los Angeles on or Las Vegas, Los Angeles too, but really Las Vegas on the Hindenburg. And inside there are a variety of, you know, gambling tables, buffet tables, uh, entertainment dancers, both holographic and real. And you head over, you actually head over to one of the, uh, one of the holographic greeters that is sort of slightly off to one side, uh, away from the rest, so not one that most people go to, but still staying there acting as a greeter and just sort of blends into the background if you're not paying attention to it. Uh, and you know that basically there is a there is a foot operated latch that powers down the hollow the the hollow reception um and opens a small you know like foot long three inch wide uh uh, uh cavity in the projector. Mm-hmm. That you can put something in. Okay. Typically, it would be a message or a data pad or a cred stick or something. I will. Do you have anything that can record? Do we have a, a hollow cam or something like that? Yeah. At the very least, you have Neri's face. True. Yeah, I have a recorder. I'm going to 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 take the take the blade. Uh just hold it. Capture. You capture the photo ne- nearies? Yep. Click. <laughs> okay. And it back. Um can you we we I need to Put that in a drop. Yes, I'm you do what you I do. Have, like, yeah, uh, a USB stick. You can offload hand it to wavy a data stick. technology yeah. things yeah. happen. You offload it to a data stick and hand it to, to yep. Esty. And I will really quick record on it. Um, need a meeting. Have a gift. And simply leave it. Yep. Record that. Walk over to the hollow projector. Casually step on the, the panel. The thing pops open. You drop the stick. You let your foot up. It closes. The hollow projector crashes down. And you very performatively go, Oh no, the projector's broken. Someone come fix it. And walk yep. away. After a while... So, uh, you know, you have to wait. You tend to have to wait for a little bit before the message gets picked up. Uh, are you wanting to? Are you all wanting to wait at the casino or head back to the promenade? I'm waiting well, here. Yeah, that'll work. Yeah. The My... less places we go, the the less likely we are to get in trouble. Mm. I was gonna... Minor foible, I should point out, Avasia. Huts aren't known mm. for. Wanting to speak basic. Fair. But I... also, to be fair, Avasi doesn't have to understand him. Fair. Vice versa. That's what we need to worry about. They usually know basic, they just don't like to speak it. He knows basic. Nerys? Oh. I was going to say I can also translate. That too. Suppose I should learn how to speak hot at some point. It is sort of the trade language of the galaxy. At least the outer rim. Very hard to learn though. It's one of those things where like the way you say a phrase changes the entire meaning of the sentence. Chuba Denalia versus Chuba Denalia means two very different things. Yeah. <laughs> well, you find a spot to sit and wait at a buffet. You pay some credits, eat some food. Do any of you go gamble? Nope. Have no nope. money. I have money, but I'm not spending it. <laughs> These are not people you want to get in debt to. 
Yeah, that sounds like a bad idea. They do offer a handy credit option if you're low nope, on money. Nope. You get a... <laughs> I have five credits. It will spot you a line of credit for your, you know, just with a small amount of interest expected back. Don't do it, Nerys. <laughs> I have 10,000 Imperial credits and they are staying in my cred stick. Hit. And, you know, Nerys, like, the math seems to add up as far as you can tell. If it's a, you know, it's a 1%, like, you know, it's a, it's a 1% accumulating interest on the, uh, on I'm the, the nervous and anxious, and I don't want to stand somewhere because it's making it worse. I will, I will, I will, penny by penny, <laughs> gamble away all this stuff. I'm not expecting to win anything. Oh, uh, you're going to the penny slots. Yeah. Yes. Go ahead and the single credit slots. So you've got yep. all your uh -huh. yeah five yep. shots. <laughs> I have five. I'm going to do it very slowly. Go ahead and in that case, give me. Hang on. Give me what would be the most most appropriate one of these. Um Give me just a... F so, do you have a skill that's just your presence roll, but with no ranks in it? Um... Yes. Charm. Uh, give me that five times. Okay. Uh, two difficulty. Okay. Two difficulty... <laughs> One what level of manipulate would you have to have to break slot machines? I'm not gonna do that. The, the ability to do it very precisely. Are you adding flow to it, or did you just forget to turn off the? Uh... Oh no, I'm also, not. Also, you didn't add uh, any. You didn't add any difficulty. I oh. haven't rolled yet. No, that's the mechanics. Oh, sorry, that's the mechanics I, was, I looked I over and saw yet. a roll, and I was like, yeah, Wait, what's sorry. This? Uh, okay, here we go. One, two, three, four, five. Wow, wow. that's real good. Mind you, you're gambling five credits, so... Yeah, yeah, I'm not going to make much. Better than nothing. Yeah. Yeah, I need to do some quick math. Turn five credits into 50 credits. <laughs> Better Still not than... a lot, but it was a good deal. Better than bad news. You, lo <laughs> you now owe the hut yourself. <laughs> Not trying to 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 get caught up in this. Nerese is passing time. You managed to turn five credits into 160 credits. Wow. Nice. Stop there. Stop there. That's how they get you. I will I will go back to the rest of the group and say I can see how this is addictive. Yes. Yep. You need to I stop should... while while you're ahead. This is a casino. I feel like because this is a casino on an inter on like a on like a major trade world, I feel like the casino probably has money changers. Yeah, they do. I would like to get my imperial credits uh exchanged for a more universally applicable type of credit. They do have a five percent fee. That's fine. It's ten thousand. I'll take whatever I get. So uh subtract uh subtract ten thousand sub, subtract five percent of that. So it's hundred and twenty. You have mm -hmm. how much do you have? I have ten thousand credits. So you are getting hold on. Uh you are you are losing five hundred. Yes, that, that would be correct. Yes. Okay. Yep. And I'm assuming um like hut credits would probably be more galactically applicable in most places. Uh, you can swap them for you can say you can swap them for um republic credits or um or yeah uh, cartel credits. 
we're probably going to be doing more business with people who take cartel. Yeah, I'll swap them for cartel credits. Instead of 10,000 Imperial credits that I will probably never use, I will have 9,500 cartel credits that I probably will be able to use anywhere. Not anywhere, but more places than the Imperial credits. All right. After a but while. Yes, it is It is very addicting. I saw more than one person gamble themselves into very bad situations before. I mean, you turned five credits into 160, though. You're not going to, no, that's not going to work on the Reeves. <laughs> <laughs> you need, you need to play that with different all arguments. of Mara's other characters. Yeah, all of my other ones would, this would work for, but not, not this one. Fair. Eventually, you do see someone come over to fix the, um, fix the hollow projector. Mm-hmm. In a little bit of time. Did you include any way of contacting you? I mean, I feel like I'm pretty much doing the same thing that I do whenever whenever I made contact with uh, Nibura, which is drop it and then wait nearby. Okay. So yeah, someone comes, they, they spend a little bit longer around the base than you think they would need to in order to repair it. And mm -hmm. then add off. We're either gonna we're either gonna have our in or be assassinated in short order. Have odds on which is more likely to happen. I mean, the odds are the odds are are, are in making contacts favor. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. <laughs> but I'm not saying it's a low chance that we get assassinated. Or at least an attempted assassination. Or at least an attempt. Like, we're talking about somebody who who is dealing we're going to get Empire secrets from. Or that's what I used them for. I'll be surprised if there isn't at least an attempt. So, let's just say don't trust a single thing. Don't, don't don't expect a single thing you say isn't going to end up in the Empire's ears. After a few more no minutes, names. Yeah. After a few more minutes, a striking-looking protocol droid approaches. Um, striking because it's a little bit more a little bit less smooth edged. It's more sharp edges than most protocol droids have, as far as your experiences are. Most protocol droids are rounded. Uh, you know, they, they have fairly rounded head, rounded limbs, appear more human, more or less threatening. This one's mostly sharp angles and you know, triangles rather than circles. Um, with sort of a bronzed, uh, with, a, with a bronzed armor body, uh, or bronzed chassis, I should say. Uh, who approaches. Salutations. Greetings, friend of Nabura. You have been invited to the VIP suite, if you would be so kind as to follow me. Delighted. Yes, thank you. Uh, the, the protocol droid nods its head, turns, walks. You follow the protocol droid for a while. They can lead you up the stairs to an elevator. The elevator goes up. Eventually opening up into a palatial estate, basically, at the top of this casino. And then leads you through the corridors on fairly well-maintained uh, carpeting. Eventually getting to a large set of double doors where they reach over, grab a pull cord, pull. There's a ting 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 tingling of, of, uh, of bells ringing. And the doors open up. Inside, you see a collector's haven of all manner of weaponry. Swords, blasters, cannon, some vehicles off to one side. 
all manner of things, all mounted exquisitely with informational placards attached to the bases, indicating exactly what this particular item is, the, giving a, sw a, a small synopsis of its history and historical significance, and also giving a point at which it was acquired by the collector, Nabura, who sits on a massive chaise lounge at the far end, currently flanked underneath a large two-handed sword that is mounted on the wall behind him, blade pointing down. This large, mottled green hut looks down at the group of you as you come in, and in Hutties. Welcome to my palace and my collection room. It's been a while. I last saw you bearing gifts, Esther. Please, the item you had on display very intriguing. I can't wait to see it and hear the story. Nibura, always delight to see you. Um, I will be honest, it's not my story to give. I would like to introduce you to dear friends of mine, of course, Raf and Avasia, and they have quite a story to tell you. And as you introduce the other two, mm -hmm. as they step forward to prepare to present themselves, that's where we will end for this week. Say goodbye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Good.